Hello and welcome to Panther Report News. I'm Tyreek Wynn. And I'm Kevin Sanchez. We begin this week with an article from The Signal. Five student government association officials may have violated their constitution after a trip they attended over the winter break. And SGA advisors say they knew nothing about it. I want to bring in Associate News Editor Ada Wood, who helped contribute to the story along with Will Solomon. So in your reporting, what does this say about how that funding could impact the SGA Constitution? Okay, so the biggest part of the Constitution we were looking at was um, Article 4, Section 4.3. And it just blatantly states no um, member should accept a gift over $5. Um, it doesn't say what the intention needs to be. It doesn't say where it needs to come from as long as it's not, if it's not from SGA and it's over $5, that's all it specifies. So when we were looking into that, we were really looking at this trip, which the plane ride alone would be at least a thousand, at least a grand. So we we're thinking, Clearly, this might be a gift, but we don't really know. Um, that's when we talked to Boyd Beckwith, um, and he is the advisor for SGA, and he told us specifically in relation to the trip, he said, yes, this trip would count as a gift according to the Constitution, and he knows the Constitution best. So that's where we really got our answer from. Right, and this also garnered several other opinions from students as well as the, you guys weighed in on the Chief Justice for the Student Judicial Board. What do they have to say? Um, so as far as SGA, we've definitely gotten a little bit um, of flack from them. Um, they see it, some of them see it as an attack. Um, for, as, for anything to do with that, we, we, we believe we're just doing our jobs as best as we can and we're going to stay behind our reporting. Um, when it comes to it, we just, as long as we're honest and ethical, we're going to stand behind it and I believe we've done that with this piece. Um, we haven't heard much from other students yet particularly. We've had some shares of interesting piece, but nothing um, particular from protesters or anything like that. Um, no other student groups have really weighed in super heavy yet um, as far as the issue goes. Yeah, and the root of the criticism as far as previous, I guess, demonstrations at the SGA meetings has to do with where the funding came from and how that could impact mm. the influence of SGA. What does that look like? So the funding specifically, um, the trip was organized by GSU Hillel, which is a Jewish student group here at Georgia State. Um, but the funding for the trip itself came from the Maccabee Task Force. Um, this organization per specifically looks to um, highlight the political debate over Israel-Palestine, and they do take that Israel stance, and but they, they claim to show an objective view, um, but they do side with Israel when it comes down to it. So they funded this group, um, and there's a lot of protesters on campus, there's a lot of students who are on, in opposition to this who side with the BDS movement, which is boy, boycott, divest, and sanction. Um, so that movement is opposite. Um, they're trying to prevent Israel from having any ties to anything in the U.S., including um, large-scale public universities like Georgia State. Yeah, and in, according to your article, it mentions that SGA advisors didn't even know that this trip was going on until it actually happened. Can you tell me a little bit more about what they thought of that decision? Um, they didn't specifically expand on it, um, but what I got from it is that they didn't know and that also um, they weren't consulted to give advice on whether this would be a constitutional problem, if there would be any ethical concerns, if there would be any backlash, um, and they also didn't consult the body as a whole. So basically the way they explained it to me is that um, these students made these decisions as they're as individuals and they didn't do it as, an, an, as a unified SGA. It was really just individuals making the decision to go on this trip, even though those individuals are still SGA representatives. Now, if members of SGA were to violate the Constitution, what could be in store for them? So the next part with that, um, that's something we talked to Boyd about. If there was a violation of the Constitution, there's potential for impeachment. But he said the next question is um, basically impeachment is completely in the hands of the Senate. They will have to take that on on their own. They will have to decide if they're going to call the call it into question. And then at that point, they're going to analyze maybe a little bit more into the intent of the trip um, and, and dive deeper into it instead of just looking at it as a gift um, over $5 specifically. So that's the next steps for that. Now, I know you guys will be following this. Ada, thank you so much for your time and the excellent reporting that you and Will have done at The Signal. Thank you so much. We've reached out to SGA President Franklin Patterson and we'll update you with the latest. Also developing, students are taking their own action. Zainab Khan, a representative for the Students for Justice in Palestine, say about four to five students are running for SGA senatorial positions. People who feel strongly about this movement, but have other skill sets and feel that they can 
help out more in that manner. That's kind of the way we're pushing them. So I feel personally, I feel like there's two different ways to go about them, but they're both necessary, and that's one of the parts. On Monday, the Students for Justice in Palestine also held a Palestine 101 at the Ebert Coffee Room. The teach-in featured community organizers like the Jewish Voice for Peace and even Palestinians who spoke about history that they've experienced. Uh, as a four-year-old kid, uh, you are close to who? To your mother. The first one you look is your mother. So I can see her waving her hand, and we left not north, not west, not south. We went east. President Patterson was also in attendance. Here's what he had to say. There was a lot of information taken. Some of it I've heard already. Um, I've been doing my own research into it just to try to gain a broader perspective. Um, it was interesting to say the least. There is a new professional football team coming to Atlanta. The Atlanta Legends, a team under the Alliance of American Football, will play their home games at Georgia State Stadium. I took a trip to the stadium ahead of their first home game. The Alliance of American Football, is, this is there in their first season, uh, so the Atlanta Legends, uh, it's one of eight teams uh, that will be competing in the league this year. They play a 10-game season. Um, they'll be home, their, their home will be here at Georgia State Stadium. Um, obviously, then the, the top four teams uh, of those eight will make the playoffs, so hopefully we can see some good football um, here over the next couple of months. I'm here at Georgia State Stadium, and this is where the Atlanta Legends will be playing come February. This month, I'm talking they will be here at Georgia State Stadium, and you, the fans out there, can be in those seats right there to witness them take this field. The Atlanta Legends will host their first home game on February 24th at 4 p.m. Mike Holmes says although there won't be special perks for students, everyone will have the opportunity to purchase discounted tickets. The Alliance of American Football and the Atlanta Legends are renting the stadium out from us. Um, so there aren't necessarily you know, incentives for students or, or Georgia State alums and fans um, right off the bat. But I know they are doing a lot of discounted tickets. Um, I know there's a promotion where you can get buy tickets for this first game that's coming up on uh, February 24th uh, for like eight or for six dollars and eighty cents. While on the field, I noticed there was something a little different about the end zone. As you can see, they have already started transforming the field for the Atlanta Legends. Holmes says this will be great for the city of Atlanta and Georgia State University because fans might want to come back to see the Panthers play football in the fall. Everybody here loves football. We see it at Georgia. State. State football games. We see, you know, Georgia Tech and Georgia and everywhere else. We see it with the Atlanta Falcons, obviously. So, um, you know, I think it's just another great opportunity for, for events, for students to come out to, fans to come out to, uh, as well as just see our stadium. And that's what's important for us is, is we're helping promote the stadium so that hopefully then fans come back that maybe came out to uh, an Atlanta Legends game and go, yeah, you know what, I want to come see Georgia State play when they play in the fall. Now the city of Atlanta has a brand new team to cheer for. I'll see you at the Legends game. The Atlanta Legends will host the Birmingham Iron on February 24th at 4 p.m. If you would like to attend the game, just go online to aaf.com and click Atlanta Legends. Georgia State President Mark Becker honored student organization presidents for the presidential brunch. Panther Report's Tony Benton Jr. has more. Georgia State University has hundreds of chartered student organizations. This means there are hundreds of presidents. Leadership programming provided not only a hearty meal, but a healthy conversation. Now this is an amazing opportunity. Presidents of student organizations have the opportunity to fellowship, eat, as well as hear from their very own SGA president and President Mark Becker. Being able to connect with a bunch of student leaders and let them know that we all need to help each other to finish in the end because being president is a tough job. It's always lonely on top and it helps to know that there's other people going through those same emotions. Student leaders were provided an insight on current status of the campus community. We spoke with the president of Delta Sigma Theta Sorority Incorporated on what she thought of the event. And having the opportunity to kind of hear from leaders that are a little bit higher up and just understanding, you know, different elements of what it takes to be a president and to be a leader and just getting that kind of inspiration and just motivation being here. Oh, you're why. Know your why, why are you doing this? Why are you sending out to get these things done and be a servant towards those goals? Now, if you would like to get involved with some on-campus activities and organizations, feel free to log into your PIN account. That's Panther Involvement Network, or you can check us out at Panther Report News. This is Tony Benton Jr. from the Student Center, President's Brunch, live with Panther Report. 
On Monday night at Sinesta Gwinnett Place, Stacey Abrams held an event to thank everyone for their hard work in her election. Abrams supporters also learned more about Fair Fight Action, an organization created to fight for fair and free elections in the United States. I traveled to Gwinnett County to attend the event. We won. Yeah. I'm here at the thank you event that Stacey Abrams and Fair Fight Action have put together. This is an event for Stacey Abrams to be able to come out and thank her supporters and volunteers that help contribute to her campaign. Stacey Abrams launched Fair Fight Action to work towards fair and free elections in the United States. Abrams made it clear that there will be a big election in 2020, but she has not made her decision on if she will be a part of that election. I need you to get your, your muscle memory ready because I believe there's a new election coming in 2020 that we need to pay for. Abrams held a press conference after she spoke to supporters and volunteers, and she encourages all to go out and vote in future elections. I interviewed some students, asked them if they voted. A lot of them said they didn't. What can you say to young people to get them to go out and vote? Well, we're going to keep saying what we've been saying, and it worked a little bit. We increased voter participation rates by 139 percent. But when you're starting low, you you know a lot of increase still means you don't get quite where you want to be. Eileen Johnson supports Fair Fight Action because she believes all elections need to be fair. Because free and fair elections mean freedom for all. And speaking of 2020, Democratic presidential candidate Elizabeth Warren is set to make a stop in Gwinnett County this weekend for a seven-state organizing tour. This would be a first for any candidate in the bid for presidency to make a public stop in Georgia. The Campus Movie Fest is the world's largest student film festival, and it made its way to Georgia State Campus. Student filmmakers were honored for their work. Reporter Karen Nelson has more. So we're here at the Campus Movie Fest screening premiere here at Georgia State, and as you can see, the scene is literally a movie. They're expecting 150 people tonight. We started about a week and a half ago. We invited all the students to come out to uh, the student center and get all the equipment they needed to get a film made. Uh, last week they got all those films collected, and today we're showing it in front of the students, in front of the whole campus. The party began as students walked into the ballroom. As the DJ played the hottest hits, the students expressed their excitement of experiencing the movie fest. I'm very excited. They're like my best friends here. I'm freaking hyped, man. We out here. We got to support one another, okay? We got to boost each other up. Campus Movie Fest hosted games, photo shoots, and gave out raffles to all guests for a chance to win some awesome giveaways. I'm entering uh, my film, uh, Brothers Can You Hear Me, which I filmed over the course of the week. I'm scared, but yeah, I'm, I'm excited. I'm excited. There were over 50 student submissions, and only 16 were selected to be screened for the movie premiere. So I'm excited to see what all the students have been doing, and I've been watching these films a couple of times as the manager, but now to see all the other their peers watching it as well, it's definitely really exciting. The screening premiere was a complete success. I saw so many great movies, so many talented actors. I had such a blast. In Atlanta, I'm Karen Nelson for Panther Report. On Tuesday, the Atlanta campus experienced a brief tornado warning as a line of heavy showers made their way across the state. Tyreek, what can we predict for next week? Well, you will need your umbrellas every day of next week. On Monday, there will be showers with a high of 60 and a low of 45. Tuesday will be rainy with a high of 53 and a low of 48. There will also be more rain on Wednesday with a high of 67 and a low of 54. Thursday, more showers will move across our area with a high of 68 and a low of 53. And Friday will continue with rain with a high of 65 and a low of 55. That's our show. Make sure you stay connected to Panther Report News throughout the week. Be sure to follow us on all social media platforms at GSU PRN. Also, subscribe down below and please let us know what you think in the comments. I'm Tyreek Wynn. And I'm Kevin Sanchez. We'll see you guys next week.